go and make disciples. This is the challenge that's been given to every Christian, the commission that's been given to every church, and the confusion that I found with most people that I talk to when it comes down to execution. If we have been commissioned and commanded to go and make disciples, the question is, what is a disciple? And then along with that, how do we make more of them? If this is how we as Christians are going to be judged, if this is we as churches are going to be graded and measured by, then why don't we seek further clarity and how to make and multiply disciples? Well, the first question is, what is a disciple? A disciple is somebody who lives by the power of the Spirit to be the presence of Christ to the people around them. In other words, they receive a new identity when they believe in Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. The Holy Spirit comes inside of them. They live in light of that. And then they go around to the world, the people around them, to demonstrate through word and deed the love of Jesus Christ and his message, which is called the good news. How can we make and multiply disciples? I wanna give you a simple framework that you can use and you can disciple your kids, you can disciple teenagers, you can disciple adults, and whether you've been a Christian for just a few moments or you've been a Christian all your life, what I'm about to share with you still applies. You see, I wanna share with you what's called a framework or like a gospel lens. In other words, this is something that we can look through and it changes how we view scripture and it changes how we view life. And so you can apply this framework in any curriculum, in any setting, and in any passage, and you can apply it in your life. And I believe if you take this framework, you can actually make and multiply disciples right now, which is exactly what we've been called to do. So here's the framework, you ready for it? It's, it comes from 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses six and seven. In those verses, Paul writes, for this reason I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God gave us a spirit, not of fear, but of power, love, and self-control. So how do we fan into flame? How do we mature that faith, mature that gift of God that we have received? Well, if we do not want to live in fear, then we have to have a combination of power, love, and self-control as the anecdote or the solution to living in fear. So here's where it is. If you can remember the shape of a triangle, if you can remember the shape of a triangle, then you can disciple somebody. Here's, here's, what it look, here's what it looks like. See, first, you have this, in the center, you get a new identity when you receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. So that new identity is something that God gives you or the Holy Spirit coming inside of you. Now, once you receive this new identity, you're seen as a new creation, then we have been called to live not for our identity, but from our identity. So that's an important distinction, that we, God has given us everything we need for godliness and for growth inside us with the power of the Holy Spirit. Now we just have to work out our salvation and, and to grow in our faith. And so it starts with identity. And now you have those three categories. If you picture a triangle, you have the top is power, and then you have on one side you have love, and on the other side you have self-control. The combination of three, these three components can radically change someone's life. See, power starts the flame, love strengthens the flame, and then self-control actually sustains the flame of your faith. And so if you wanna fan into flame the gift that God has given you, you wanna grow in the areas of power, love, and self-control. Now, let's talk through each section. How do you grow in power? We already mentioned that you receive the Holy Spirit inside of you, and so you're not necessarily growing in the Spirit, but as you start to obey what God tells you, you start to walk in the Spirit. So the two ways that you can grow in the power of God is through reading your Bible and praying. And so in, in any setting you get together with someone, chances are you're going to actually read your Bible, read God's Word together, talk about what it means, and you're going to pray together. And so those are two ways you can grow in power. Now, with, when it comes to love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, and so we learned that in John 3, 16. But the most commonly quoted verse when it comes to us and our love that we give is actually seen as the greatest commandment. To love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, 
and to love your neighbor as yourself. In other words, we're called to love God and to love others. When you love God, that is an act of worship. You're giving your affections up to the person that you value most. And so loving God is about worship. And loving others is done through relationship. So the two ways to grow in love is to love God and to love others. Now you have this third category called self-control. Now self-control, if I'm being honest, is the least sexy of the three. And what I mean by that, very rarely do you see um, Instagram posts and social media posts and mugs and plates and, and, and knitted blankets with the word self-control on it. You don't see that, but see the reality is self-control is a mark of maturity. We have three kids at home, nine, five, and two, and our two-year-old, right now we're trying to potty train, and so she actually has, um, she walks around in diapers and in pull-ups because she is learning self-control. Right now she eats in a high chair because she is learning self-control. We're teaching her words because she is learning self-control. And so as we grow as a Christian, we will actually grow in this area. You want to picture life like a river really has three components. It has a source, it has a direction, but then it also has boundaries. By creating boundaries for ourselves, we're not actually limiting ourselves, but rather we're freeing ourselves to go after in the direction that God has called us. And so there's two main areas that we grow in self-control. One is our attitudes. We can grow, it's really that in, implies what we think and how we feel. And so uh, we can grow in self-control and our attitudes. And secondly, we can grow in self-control through our actions, the things that we do, and then also the things that we shouldn't do. And so if you wanna grow in self-control, most likely it's gonna be in the area, most likely it's gonna be in the area of your attitude or your actions. Now here's where this discipleship triangle really gets practical. Okay, you ready for it? Let's just say you are struggling with attitude. What can you do? Well, if you're struggling with attitude, you just have to go back to prayer. You see, that side of the triangle is connected. So if you're struggling with your attitude, you pray to God to adjust your attitude. And as you pray, praying to God ultimately changes your attitude and leads you towards humility. Now, let's say you're struggling to love God. You're on the other side of the triangle. What can you do as a Christian to fall back in love with God and with Jesus? Well, the best thing you can do is read the word of God to understand the will of God and to fall in love with the person of God. And so that means the more that you read the Bible and understand who God is, the more you're gonna fall in love and ultimately worship and love God. Now, on the bottom side of the triangle, let's say you are struggling to love others. Well, then you wanna go across the bottom there and connect the two and say, okay, well, how are my actions? What am I doing? Am I, are my actions demonstrating my love for other people? And vice versa is, true, is also true. So if you're struggling on the action side, you wanna go back to your motive and say, okay, am I being motivated by selfish gains or are my actions being motivated by love? So there you have it, the discipleship triangle. You can make a disciple. You can do it right now. Think about your children. Think about your neighbor, your coworker, your friend. You don't have to be a master to lead someone. You just simply have to be one step ahead. Now, being a disciple is something that's gonna be a lifelong pursuit. But you can learn the principles of making disciples in just a few minutes. And I believe if we are confident in understanding God's word and walking through the process that our identity is in Christ, and that we wanna grow in the power of Christ to, to start the flame, to grow in love for God and for others, to fan the flame. And then we grow in maturity and self-control, sustaining our flame, um, that we can go and make disciples. So next time you sit down with someone, just walk through the triangle, read scripture together, talk about how you can love God more, how that should lead you to love others like Jesus has loved us. And then talk about how we can grow in our attitudes and actions and pray to God asking him to continually transform our minds, hearts, and hands as we go out to live our faith. And let's make disciples because that is what God has called us to do. Have an awesome day and know you can make disciples because God has given us the Holy Spirit living inside of us so that we can go out and live for him.